Dear delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize not being able to be here with you, but I thank the opportunity to address you through this video. Farmers have been breeding crops and animals since agriculture was developed over 10,000 years ago. Over time, farmers have created an enormous range of crop from more than 10,000 plant species. The process of cultivating and selecting crop over thousands of years has resulted in a tremendous genetic diversity with different varieties having been adapted to different conditions and exhibiting different character characteristics. However, this treasure, enhanced by the farmer's ingenuity, has been under severe increasing threat over uh, time. In the past, 7,000 species of cultivated uh, plants uh, uh, fed humanity. Today, 120 plant species are important for food uh, and agriculture, and only 30 crops provide 95% of all human diet, energy, and protein. This decline in agrobiodiversity has enormous implications for food security. It is in the light uh, of that that we appreciate the critical importance of crop genetic diversity for achieving food security worldwide and the sustainable development in the context of poverty alleviation and climate change. The international community has long recognized the interdependence of all countries with regard to plant genetic resources for food and agriculture, as well as their special nature. The fundamental role of agricultural biodiversity is relevant for both FAO and its International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, as well as the Convention on Biological Diversity and its Nagoya Protocol on Access and Benefit Sharing. The Nagoya Protocol was adopted in 2010 to further the third objective of the Convention regarding access to genetic resources and their fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising from their utilization. Specific obligations to support compliance with the access rules of the party providing the genetic resources and the mutually agreed terms on which access is granted are significant innovations of the Nagoya Protocol. By promoting the use of genetic resources and associated traditional knowledge and by strengthening the opportunity for fair and equitable sharing of benefits from their use, the Nagoya Protocol will create incentives to conserve agricultural biodiversity and plant genetic resources. The Protocol also recognizes the special nature of genetic resources for food and agriculture, and I have no doubt that mutually supportive implementation of the Protocol and the Treaty can ensure continued access and benefit sharing from the use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. Indeed, the treaty addresses the specific features of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture in a manner which is fully consistent with the object objective and provisions of the Convention. This is highlighted by the treaty's objectives, which are to cons uh, the conservation and sustainable use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture and the equitable sharing of benefits arising from their use in harmony with the CBD. The treaty's multilateral system of access and benefit sharing is facilitating the exchange of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture on a daily basis. It has also developed a unique multilateral fund to enable benefit sharing and I am very interested to see further support to on-farm uh, conservation and management of agrobiodiversity through its uh, innovative me mechanism. The adoption of the Nagoya Protocol opens, opens a new area of collaboration between the Convention and the Treaty. I'm very pleased that we have signed in, in Nagoya a memorandum of cooperation between the Convention and the Treaty, and that it, uh, this has now been uh, elaborated into a CBD Treaty Joint Initiative, which has been uh, signed uh, by Shaquille and I and launched together at the margins of the Rio Plus 20 Summit at the second high-level roundtable of the treaty. These two documents establish the framework in which the CBD and the International Treaty can work together and enhance the effectiveness of in situ conservation, sustainable use, and access and benefit sharing together through our collaborative partnerships. 
The CBD Treaty Joint Initiative is particular, including several important activities, which includes support for the ratification of the Nagoya Protocol in its harmonious implementation with the treaty through expanded joint capacity building activities and sharing expertise on information management for access and benefit sharing. Also, a joint initiative on on-farm conservation, sustainable use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture, and protected areas. Sharing of results from the treaty's benefit sharing program for keeping farmers ahead of climate change and conservation of plant genetic resources on-farm and in situ. Joint case studies on in situ and on-farm conservation of plant genetic resources and its facilitation through relevant ABS agreements. Finally, development of joint components in the sustainable work, work programs of the CBD and the treaty. We have already embarked on a number of these uh, joint activities, such as a series of joint capacity building workshops and joint briefing of the Nagoya Protocol and the International Treaty to stakeholders and government officials, which Shaquille and I conducted in Brazil in February this year. Following the most recent conference of the parties of the CBD in Hyderabad, India last year, I'm excited to further strengthen the cooperation with the treaty and its implementation of the 2011-2020 strategic, strategic plan for biodiversity and the real, realization of the IET biodiversity targets. The Conference of the Parties has long recognized the treaty's contribution to the implementation of our work on agriculture and nutrition, while the treaty has supported the Convention's global strategy for plant conservation. Now we need to demonstrate that our collaboration can bring new value added and clear results to governments and society as a whole. I would like in particular to promote the broad collabor collaborative partnership with the treaty and other institutions to strengthen the in situ conservation of agrobiodiversity for food security. This will contribute to achieving the Aichi biodiversity targets 11, 13, and 18 of the strategic plan for biodiversity and targets 11, uh, 9 and 13 of the global strategy for plant conservation. To enhance cooperation and coordination among the various initiatives, institutions, and organizations for achieving food security, there's a need to create a framework that would link us together to enable to share experiences, strengthen, uh, strengthen efforts, and help our respective constituencies and align our work priorities. It is only through such partnerships that we will be able to achieve our common goals. I will also uh, be remiss if I did not mention the IET Target 16, which focus on the early entry into force of the Nagoya Protocol and its operationalization uh, by parties. We will uh, be on, on the way to the entrance uh, uh, in force uh, of this protocol. I have every confidence that the protocol will be in force in time for the 12th meeting of the Conference of the Parties of the CBD which will be held in Korea in the fall of 2014. Allow me to conclude by saying that it's clear to me that at the heart of the CBD and the International Treaty, we share the same goal. The achievements under the Nagoya Protocol will contribute to the strengthening of the implementation of the treaty, while the treaty's success will support the CBD in accomplishing uh, our mandate. I thus could not be more pleased with our cooperation to date, and I look forward to many more opportunities for us to work together in the future. Thank you.